my hello, with Cetra's tutorial being a bit outdated now, I decided to give my own go, it's doing an 90% tutorial, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, for, first of all, if you're playing emulator, I definitely recommend binding pause in settings, so if you go to control mapping, go a bit further down here, it should be ones that should be called pause somewhere here. I have it on L2 personally. Basically, lets you get to this menu really quickly because it's here that you change your memory card, and we're gonna do that a few times this run. Other than that, there's not really any differences between emulator and console, so we're just gonna go straight into it. Oh, and also, as you see, I have this menu here when I press new game. Make sure you have autosave on at the beginning of the run if you're doing emulator. It doesn't really matter on console, but you don't want to do a bunch of extra menuing in an emulator. It's like 4 seconds at best uh, that you lose each time that you need to do some menuing. So with that said, we're just going to hop on in. So you're just going to skip the cutscene first by pressing X. And then uh, for some base movement stuff, just good to know that single jumping is always faster than walking. Then also, Daxter gets a speed boost when you look at an angle, kind of like this. So wherever you can implement those two things, make sure to do it to get a little bit of speed boost. There you go, we're just gonna walk into that cutscene, not talk to him, but instead jump up to this box here. So this box is a bit finicky, but basically the concept of the, this clip is that you want to ledge grab as far into the box as possible, about there, and that will push you to the other side. So basically the way I like to set it up is to uh, jump in a way that I won't ledge grab first, but I'm still like rather close and double jump and then flick a little bit. It's not really super easy way to get into Breeze Valley here, so I definitely recommend taking this route, it's the fastest one. You can use the first person here to align the camera in case you have the difficulty navigating out of bounds without the camera being positioned well. Uh, so it's uh, D-pad up to go into first person, and then you can move around, and then D-pad down to go out of it. And then here you're gonna want to jump around the corner. Uh, I recommend double jumping and doing a spin right there. Let's see. Can I, there we go. Now it's a bit easier to see the area here. But yeah, it's just around the corner behind the box there. And you're gonna want to walk straight forward. You can jump, single jump to make it faster. To about here. And then uh, double jump forward like this. And you'll land in the portal taking you into the first level here that we're gonna do. Breezy Valley. Here you're gonna drive into here, and one thing to note is uh, there's not a super optimal precursor orb to pick up anywhere, but you need to pick up at least one. A lot, a lot of them are very easy to pick up by mistake, so a lot of times you might not think about it, but it is actually possible to play really optimally here without collecting a single precursor orb, and you need at least one to enter Matrix. So, from here, you just want to drive around and follow this route. Make sure you don't cut that turn too hard like I tried to do there. It's about to not be able to hit it. Drop 
down here. And here I recommend doing a hop with your Elven. Um, and then drive down here. This flower over here, do a hop again with Al. Go a hop here. And then you follow along here. Drive down here. Don't do a hop here. I find it a lot easier and usually I land there fine, but this time it was a bit awkward. That's fine though. Then it's just driving over the bugs. Like that. Samplings. And then um for the uh, uh, queen uh, fight here, uh, immediately you're gonna want to hold to the left and drive up the hill on the left side. So hold left here, drive up, and then like that. You're gonna want to land on the left side of this flower here, turn around, and then hold X. You start holding X when you're fully turned around, if you've uh, done that well. If you were a little bit slow getting there, then you can start holding X a little bit earlier though, to be able to catch up to the queen. And then from here, you're gonna want to drive up this hill and meet the queen on the way here. And then for this last hit, you're gonna want to hop over this hill and uh, meet her when she's uh, going around the corner like this and that's Breezy Valley complete and then right then when you saw mission complete there you can pause the game because it's fast to save and load to get out of Breezy Valley one thing to note is that there's a slight delay when you save before you can menu, but once that delay is over, you can do the menu pretty much instantly. So slight delay, and then X left X circle. And save as fast as possible. It looks kind of like this if you do it fast. And then for loading, even though it's going to say you need to press circle at the end, you actually only need to just spam X, so just go down, load, and just spam X the entire time. And then here you just want to reverse back in to the Don't know what it is about portal, this stuff, but and follow along here to, catch a few Zs. to the dream level tutorial for Matrix. This is a bit of a boring level, especially this early in the run. <laughs> have an auto scroller that also has some RNG in it. There is uh, not really much to know in this auto scroller, basically just spam X at the beginning here to start as early as possible. And then uh, right at the end we're gonna uh, just ignore the inputs the game wants us to do and just spam to end the matrix level as quick as possible. So try to make sure you don't take damage. It's fine to take a little bit, but if you take more than one point of damage you're gonna have to consider that in the final phase. But yeah, up until then it's really just reading around, hitting the buttons at the same time. So here you're gonna want to triangle, square, and just spam X after get that guy's done. You can do that as long as you have uh, taken at most 1 HP damage. Sometimes you can survive if you've taken 2 HP damage there, but 
that's kind of sketchy. Yeah, from here, you just want to make your way out as quick as possible. There's a cutscene here. Make sure you spam an X to get out of that. And then from here, we now have the scooter. Uh, driving in a vehicle is the only time where holding an angle with Dexter doesn't actually save it in time, so you don't need to worry about the camera angles at all if you're driving. And also you saw that uh, I released the scooter a bit early there. Uh, you can actually release the scooter to put it earlier to you once the cutscene is over uh, by pressing the triangle right before it starts. And that's gonna save time here. Since the scooter is gonna be literally right here, so we can immediately jump onto it. And then here, uh, we're gonna do a trick called Barrier Skip. I'm just gonna put a save state here. Make it easier. Basically, you wanna drive up to about here without stopping, of course. And about here, you're gonna jump off of the scooter and then turn around so that you're looking away from the barrier. By looking away from the barrier, you make the scooter just not realize the barrier is there, so it can just go through the barrier. And then after that, you can jump onto the scooter from the other side. So the way it looks in action is this. Uh, might have been a bit late there. We're gonna see. You need to wait about three to four seconds there before you're able to move if you threw it at a good time. You can if you hold your camera perfectly actually just move on forward here, even if the scooter hasn't made it past yet. Um, but it's really hard to keep the uh, camera proper so that it won't uh, make the scooter just proxy out of the wall. So I definitely recommend just waiting there for like 4 seconds. So here we go. This was close enough. Here I didn't even need to jump. A lot of times you will need to jump to do it, but here I didn't even need to do that. And now we're through. It's other side here. And here we have come to the big skip in this run, that is part of the reason why this uh, run is so short. Um, teleported menu storage. Basically in this teleported menu here, you can either cancel to go out, press OK to go in, or if you press both at the same time, it's going to give the effect as if you cancelled, but you get to keep the teleporter menu. And uh, we're going to use this here to make our way into uh, construction site 1 because we need the bug spray. Uh, but the problem is we have our scooter on this side of the barrier now. Uh, and uh, we need it on the other side to make our way to construction site 1. So we're going to TMS here. So X and circle at the same time. And it's going to plop you where you started the run. And then uh, you're gonna want to here in the crit or ridder shop right as you go in. You want to press X and circle at the same time once again. This time you want to keep holding X. You don't want to release it when you're done. I failed that, so let's try again. There we go. So as you see, I'm continuing to hold X. What this allows you to do is to drive with the scooter. Um, normally if you would press X in the um, city port or in the Haven city streets, as uh, these hub areas are called, uh, you would uh, crash the game. But by holding X here, we can actually drive anyways. then you can cut off here to 
save a little bit of time on the turns. Then you want to use this wall here to turn quickly. And then do a hop pretty early. You want to do it like right as you hit the bump there. Like, not while you're on it, but like right as you see you're about to hit it. And then from here, if you're an emulator as I am, uh, you should do a crouch here and then uncrouch. And then once you've gotten up here to get over this ledge, you should get as close to this ledge as possible. Uh, not hold your stick at all. And then do one smack and slightly after move forward. If you want to be really safe, you can do smack and then an extra smack. But that's not needed. Alternatively, if you're on console, it's probably better to have uh, removed the memory stick once so that you can jump over this ledge. And then once you've passed over this line here, so that you're out of the Haven City streets, now you can. Uh, Use your TMS to get into the construction site. So we're gonna do just that. Then you're gonna want to TMS once you've gone down the first danger symbol thing. So that's where now here at the beginning of construction site one. And then um, here you're gonna want to remove your memory stick. Which you do like that on emulator. So now you have this menu up, and the interesting thing about this no memory stick detected menu is that you can continue to use inputs in the overworld, but you can't do any menuing, which means that the, our teleporter menu is completely safe until we press circle. So here you want to try to land here on this barrel, and take the rod up here. Make your way up this trampoline. Then here you want to do a double jump spin around the corner here. You can make it before the ledge grab too, it's fine. And then here we have our first vent clip. So you can crouch like you're supposed to here, but if you uh, jump correctly, the impact of the uh, uh, Dexter landing will actually allow him to clip into vents without crouching, like he kind of ducks when he lands. So for this uh, vent in particular, you want to try to land on the bottom of the vent without hitting the top of it, which is a bit hard, but I do it by turning around a bit and then turning back forward, like that. I find it a lot easier to do in action, personally. And then once you've skipped this cutscene, now you've gotten the uh, bug spray, which means we've done everything we need to in this level. So we're immediately gonna TMS once again to get back to the start. And then from here, we're gonna go up the elevator again, and you're gonna want to once again remove the memory stick. This time it's going to see memory stick down and shit, so press yes, and then back out of it, and now you will get up the menu again. So from here, we now have basically everything we need to have for the endgame. We have the bug spray. When we entered the brewery there at the start, I didn't mention it, but we got the ability to hover. And uh, right side, right outside of the tanker, we're gonna pick up the flamethrower. And at that point, we can do the end game. But first, we need to make our way to the city port. So you're gonna want to go into this corner here, and uh, you want to hold X and square at the same time. This makes you drive a bit slower which makes this uh, proxy a lot more consistent. So the two things 
with driving up here that I think make the proxy a lot more consistent is being all the way into the corner and having your scooters straight perpendicular to the wall. Like that. If you can, try to land on the scaffolding like I did just now. Because that means you can jump over like this. So you get over an invisible wall here. And then you can make your way here. I like to look at the radar to find where I'm going. And then here is where you're supposed to put the pin. So you just jump forward here and you're on the other side the wall we saw previously. Um, I should have placed my... I'll just do this. You can walk through the door from the outside but not from the inside. Because that's how walls work in this game. Yeah, just to show what you have to do in case you don't get a good enough launch where you get up on the scaffolding. Um, that's not a good enough launch for anything. But yeah, basically you want to drop down here. If you, if you walk down from the scaffolding, this is also where you're going to land. And then... Um, gonna walk along this wall here and then around here you're gonna turn around it and you want to walk a bit diagonally up since there is a wall you want to move past I hit it before but yeah it's this one right here there's a wall but yeah once you've gotten past that we are now on our way to the city port Waiting on the other side here is a scooter, thankfully. You can just jump forward here to it and be on your way. And right now we're gonna drive through the cutscene where we get our final item we need for the endgame. The flamethrower. then here, uh, we're gonna now do the final thing we need to do with uh, our TMS. So what you want to do here is you want to walk into this uh, purple view and when you f the splash sound sounds like it's pretty much finished, you want to press X and only X. If you do it uh, in the wrong way, um, timing either crash or you go into the strip mine. You don't want either of those, you want to go into tank or two here. So walk in, splash is done, press X, and we're in. So for the first few here, just follow this path. Start isn't particularly exciting, but there's some interesting out of bounds stuff, and I've never done that. <laughs> well, I actually pressed X the second time to wait. That is some of the easiest movement I've ever failed in this game. Nah. Everyone does stupid stuff sometimes. So here you can once again do a, a vent clip. This one's a lot easier than the other one. It just jumps at it here a little bit before this vent. And you'll clip in. It's probably one of the easiest vents in the game, honestly, to clip in. And then from here, you're gonna wanna go out of bounds on this pipe here. So, gonna jump up like this and slide down 
and then you're gonna want to land on the top there, like the top middle of the pipe. It is easy to overshoot it or undershoot it. Undershooting it isn't as bad because you don't need all the fuel you have for the out of bounds here. This can be a bit tricky to get right on the center of the pipe. Once you do, you're out of bounds here. One thing to note is that if you walk too far forward here, there's gonna be a wall stopping you a bit to the right. So don't walk all the way forward. And then here, if you want, you can use uh, first person to realign your camera once again. It's, the camera is still gonna be bad, and I. Oops. I was very close to the edge, so just that little walk made me fall off. It's been a while since I realigned the camera, so bear with me. <laughs> I know starting out, realigning the camera can be nice. So as you saw before I went like that, you want to jump on the other side of this pillar here blocking the way. Like this, so you land here. And you're gonna walk forward a bit, and you're gonna hover in this direction right there. So it's gonna look like this. And you're gonna get through here into this room. This uh, out of bounds saves a ton of time, so I definitely recommend doing it starting out. Then here, there are two out of bounds here you can do. One is obviously a bit faster. So the trick to this one is you wanna uh, from this uh, uh, wooden raft I guess. You want to double jump up against this pipe at the middle of it and then you want to immediately after your double jump start holding circle to hover and move to the left so it's gonna look like this and you're through to the side and you can drop down here to finish the level. If you go a bit too far to the left, you can actually still land there and finish the level as long as you keep holding the right there. In case you fail this out of bounds, don't use this raft again because it is going to fall down and you're most likely going to fall into a queue, which is going to send you this far back, all the way back here, and that's not fun. So instead, you want to use this other raft and jump up against the pipe again in the same way. Like that. That second one is a lot easier, in my opinion. Then from here, I'm just gonna jump around the corner. I haven't done it a lot, but yes, holding your camera at an angle does make Dexter faster. I don't know why, but it does. So, whenever you have easy movement, it's really nice to do it, because it's going to speed you up quite a bit. Just make sure you're not doing it at expense of holding good angles. As much as it speeds you up, you're going to move faster if you actually just hold good angles, than if you go zigzag with a good camera angle. But I'm gonna try to hold the camera angle to the side to see if I were to show you guys what that would look like in a run. And from here, you're gonna want to jump up on this table right here. I'm gonna double jump hover up on the top of this uh, bookshelf right here.
and then you're gonna double jump hover around this wall here and you're on the other side saves a lot of time moving around and definitely pick up this view lord it's worth it. then as you make your way around not to take too much damage here, and then you want to double jump hover so you can use these fuel orbs here to hover all over all of them. And you saw me drop down a bit early there, that was intentional to make that uh, warrior attack the opposite direction of where I was going. They try to predict where you're going a bit, so I like to exploit that on this warrior here. So I can jump across here with no problem, and that guy is always trying to threaten you at the start without going for you, so it's never a problem if you just go for it immediately. Here, just hover over this. And now we're in the room of gold. Here's a nice spot to use camera angles to make the extra go faster. And then here, normally you'd go around there, but instead can just go here. So there's a two, and there's two ways you can do this. You can either double jump square here to be able to hover and that way you can land like that, which is the faster way. Or if you find that difficult, you can just hover around here and land below and continue holding circle. It's important that you continue holding circle if you do that, so that you hover at this earliest possible moment so that you don't fall down to that electric zone. Then from here, you're gonna want to move up here and then land at the top here and then jump across and hover. You can make that ledge grabless. Then make your way here. Press X to make that hint quickly and drops down into the hole. So right here we're at the end of the palace. I recommend jumping on top of this bear, uh, this box. You can also go up on this box and do this stand a level. But I think this is actually a pretty easy strat to do here. You go here and then you're gonna want to double jump so that Dexter hits the door there and then right after your double jump start holding circle just like in tanker 2 at the end so double jump and then hold circle mess it up a bit there like that and you can hover across immediately saves time to you going up on that box, but that box is good back up. Then from here you can vent clip, pretty easy vent to clip. And then here there are two cutscenes, if you want to spam your way through, you can go over this box. If you are close to this guy, make sure to jo not jump or he will shoot you. And then you want to go up into this race car. This race is pretty straightforward, just avoid the blue the lace the blue force fields that will slow you down and hit as many of the turbos as possible to be able to escape the dude chasing you. There are some pretty cool skips in prison, but there's nothing major. This is by far the largest, or the longest level, rather, in the game, unfortunately. Well, not much to do. Yeah, there, just skip the cutscene. And then we wanted to hop up on that zone. You can't hop up anywhere else. I got. Make sure to take this fuel orb here. It's worth here he's behind the pillar, so I'm gonna wait. 
if he's just going behind the pillar, you can go for it. Or if he's going there, that exact timing that I started walking there, you can actually make this cycle. Usually that goes fine. I guess I was slightly slow there while explaining. That cycle I went for there is harder than this one. This one you just go like this, like that. It will depend on your guard cycles, which way you go. You can wait out as well, if you want. Yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to see here from the angle I am, but there is another vent in here. So you can vent clip both of them to go a bit faster. There's a little bit of a vent here as well that is a bit hard, but you can actually event clip here if you time your jumps right. I personally am not good enough to get it in the run, so... this From this part here, I like to start crawling, which is a bit slower, but it's a very specific timing to vent clip there. It's by far the hardest vent clip in the run. And then here, you want to walk out about here, if you walk out too far left or too far right, one of the scorpions will sap you. And against that scorpion, you want to walk straight towards it to minimize the chance that it will sap you. Then here, I'm gonna show up the hover a little bit. I'm not gonna do the full hover. The full hover is very hard. I don't recommend starting out doing it. But I'm gonna show some hovers here in this 2D section, at least. So... When you're about here, you want to jump off the elevator in order to keep the momentum of the elevator and then hover and you want to make sure you ledge grab to be able to keep the momentum and then you can jump over to this one and then you can double, triple jump here and make it up to this one. It is possible to hover up like this and land up there, but that's very difficult. I do not recommend doing that starting out. If you do fail this hover at the start here, there is a bit of a backup hover here on this elevator over here. You want to start jumping up about here. And then you can make your way here. As you notice, you can ledge grab here and you can actually make the same difficult hover I mentioned earlier, but I do not recommend doing that one. Instead, make your way over to this elevator and jump about here and hover your way up here. Using the momentum of those elevators to hover saves a lot of time there. And if the, if the camera doesn't follow you here when you move out of bounds, you're gonna have to start crawling. Because realistically, or not just realistically, this guy doesn't move at all unless uh, the camera follows you. So make sure you do that. And you can jump up here. Make your way across. Don't go too early here, it's actually a lot earlier, a lot later than you think that you need to go in order to pick up that uh, key without him sapping you. And I didn't explain the movement here, well, it, it showed on my input viewer, but yeah, if you crawl there's a bunch of going around and shit, but if you do the clip, it's not. Basically all there is to it if you do the clip is like moving up left like this until you get into this corner right here, and then just move straight forward. Wanted to make sure I commented on that, so <laughs> it was an enemy player. Just want to make your way over. Make 
sure you you seen your flamethrower if you keep out of harm's way. And then once again, yes, you can event clip here. I want to see if we can do it so I can show how the camera angles are. So you want to walk about up here where it shakes and then when it shakes over here you want to stop going to the right and start moving up again and it will take you into this cutscene and you walk forward and you're on the other side uh, unlike the previous vent this one follows completely the vent as it looks if you crawl so you can crawl through it if you want to see about what it looks like Yeah, from here, about there, you want to start jumping over that guy so he doesn't zap you. And you want to make your way across over right here. This guy can't see you when you're hovering, but on this cycle, he's gonna see me if I try to go for it. So I'm gonna wait for him to turn around and then make my way to this platform here. And then jump across. There's some fancy out of bounds movement and shit that you can do in this area. It's really hard, so I don't recommend doing it starting out. And here you wanna hover. And you can actually look at your hover when you can do it again. Uh, if you pay attention you see that after you've fully used your hover it will be the like part of the meter will be grayed out that is the and it it will shrink like the amount that is grayed out will shrink over time so here I have a bit grayed out and then it shrank like that so when it's fully when all the gray is gone then you can use your full hover again you don't know, need exactly your full hover for these spinners, but almost your full hover. So I recommend just waiting for the entire grade to be gone. And once you've done all those three, you can go to the side here and jump across. Make sure you're not moving before it starts spinning, or you're gonna fall off. You can do the same technique where you use the spinner to go faster on this spinner and if you hold the correct angle you can actually hover to the other side there but uh, it's a lot easier to just make your way over here and then hover across like that with how much fuel I have right now I don't really need to pick up this fuel orb but usually you'll have um, an amount of fuel where you need to pick it up so here you want to skip the cutscene and then instead of doing the person mini game here you're gonna want to jump up on this chair right here and then you're gonna want to hover so that you land on this uh, uh, portal at the top of it like in the middle of the top allows you to land for a moment and you want to continue holding circle when you do that so that you can hover with your base for hovering being up in the portal so you can make it over the wall and it looks kind of like this I failed it but just try again just put that there This is going well right now, like that, and you'll make your way over the wall. Now we've made it into the final boss. So if you played this casually, you would know that since we don't have the ultrasonic luster, we can't do the um, third phase of this boss fight, but there is a skip in the boss fight. So we no longer need to pick up that weapon. Oh. 
I don't think the skip in the boss fight is particularly hard starting out. And um, especially with how much time it saves, not just in the boss fight itself, but the fact that you don't need to pick up the ultrasonic blaster. It's definitely worth doing. So this first phase is pretty straightforward. You really just wanna be able to read where he's going and put the flamethrower on him as soon as possible. It is worth noting that you wanna wait for him to land before you start flamethrowing. If uh, if he lands on a spot where you are very close to it, you can actually accidentally start burning it too quickly because you're not actually burning him directly, you're burning the gas that goes up out of these things. So like here, if I were to burn too early, it would actually not hit him. So make sure to wait for him to actually land. I waited a bit, like, extra extra long there. You don't need to actually wait that long. But you need to wait a bit. I am at 1 HP here, but once I've gone past this base, the HP you have actually doesn't matter anymore. So here, what you wanna gonna want to do is you wanna go to the top right here, because you wanna hover over to the platform next to him before he does his uh, cool attack that's supposed to make you have to go over there. Normally you need the fuel cells that pop up when he does his attack to make it over, but if you space out your jumps good enough you can make it over there early. It looks like this. And then from here uh, you're now in a position where you want to start setting up the big launch that's going to send you to the end of the, the game. So I'm going to explain this um, from the perspective of where the final boss is, Caden. So uh, from you, you're going to hover up on top of his back. And the further to the left of his back, which is to say the side that we're on right now, the further to the left of his back, the more height you get. And then when you go a little bit further right on his back, you get maximum height and maximum speed. And then when you go even further right, both height and speed go down. So you want to make sure you're pretty far to the left of his body, but not quite all the way, because then it's just height, no speed. So you're gonna see here that I'm gonna. Oh, oh and also one more thing uh, outside of position is uh, it's actually best to hold a little bit upright like this. You're seeing on the input viewer there. Um, holding that angle for Daxter when you're on top of his bike, uh, on top of his back is gonna give you a really good launch. But yeah. When he stops attacking, I'm gonna bring up this one, like that. Then, right after this cutscene, I'm gonna double jump, hover, and move forward on top of his back. So I was too far left there, so I got all height, no speed. So we're gonna do it again. I release hover too early there, so I ended up being too far to the left. Like that, I made it over. That was a super good launch because I landed right here, which is uh, where the end cutscene is. And you just jump in here and you're done. I'm gonna try and see if I can show off a launch that you can save but that is a lot slower. Uh, which is gonna be a bit hard since I'm gonna have to intentionally go out of my way to not do my setup. If you go a bit further in, 
No, that was still too good. <laughs> Like that, you hover here and move upwards. Here, as you could see, I was all the way over here. So if you move really far to the right of its body, you're gonna get launched very far to the side here, but not very close uh, in the because I'm Dexter is pointing at where you launched from. So, when I got the launch here, I got a lot of speed in that direction, but not in this direction. So, by moving in this direction only, I was able to get here, and I was already in the middle here. Whereas a lot of runners I know get a launch where they land about here. I want to try and see if I can get one so that you can recognize what it looks like. But if I don't, that's not too bad. Like that? That's usually the launch, I think. Yeah, you saw those lines there? If you see those lines, that means you're about on this corridor. So you want to land right about where those lines are. If you're a little bit further down when you see those lines, which I see a lot of runners be, you want to make sure that when you are about at this corridor, that you continue holding the circle button to make sure that this uh, area loads in so that you actually get collision with the uh, corridor here. But yeah, if you have some fuel remaining, you can just make your way over here. That's pretty much everything you need to know in this speedrun. So now you're ready. Get a good time. Good luck.